I'm Doug Keener, and I got internet famous for making a mod on a computer game from the 1990s. It's now time for tonight's Hashtag Wars. It has never been easier for the average Joe to make their own mods for a video game. Take, for example, Doug Keener, who spent 100 hours recreating Seinfeld's apartment in, the, in Doom 2, which was on Reddit, and it was amazing. Check it out. <laughs> George. Hello, Newman. <laughs> so tell me who you are personally. Uh, well, I grew up in a suburban household in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania. It's kind of on the outskirts of Pittsburgh, South Hills. Um, live with my parents. I didn't have any pets, no siblings. Um, I've been an only child my whole life. Um, so I, I'm used to, you know, being alone and, and uh, just feeling stuff out for myself. You like being alone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really enjoy it. Um, it allows me to get things like the mod uh, done. Personally, I think I get work done more alone. Um, playing video games since I was five. Um, my first game I ever bought was Spyro the Dragon for PS1. One of the greatest games of all time. And uh, I've been playing video games all through all through my schooling career and still play them to this day. What was your childhood with Doom like? How did it come into your life? Uh, well, I had an Xbox 360 uh, in its heyday, you know, around 2008, 2009. And um, on their marketplace, they were selling the original Doom in the arcade, in the arcade version of it. And uh, it was the full game. And I wanted to check it out because I heard all kind of good things about it. I knew it was one of the first first person shooters ever. Um, the soundtracks influenced by bands that I love, you know, like Metallica, Slayer, Pantera, stuff like that. Um, and I downloaded it one day off the marketplace just to try it out. And I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I knew the stigma associated with it with the Columbine shootings and the Columbine kids. I knew all that stigma and I, I don't condone any of the actions of these people, but Eric Harris made his own maps with Dylan. They made their own maps on old software back in like 96, I think he made the maps. And uh, you know, I, I thought, you know, that's pretty cool, they made maps, you know, you can make pretty much anything. And I, I also learned that Doom and Wolfenstein and all these id software games were very easily moddable because of how small they were and the, the file format and how, how everything was pixelated and it was so easy to make a mod for it. Obviously if they could do it in 96 on a Windows 95, you know, we could do it in 2016 on a Windows 10, you know, and it would, it would be a breeze, which it was. I, I looked up how to make the maps, I looked up some programs that people use, because people still make maps today. Um, but I think without that Columbine exposure, I don't know if I would be as interested in making a map. For the mod, um, basically, the re-release, the re it's not really a re- I guess it would be a remake um, of, of the original Doom that was released earlier this year in May 2016 uh, by Bethesda. They actually partnered with id Software, the original developers, and they re-released it and they came out with a new Doom. And in this new Doom, they had the classic maps. You could unlock them as you played the regular story and play on the old Doom maps. And that really inspired me to go back to take a look at the old Doom again. What was your, like, what made you say, Oh, I want to create a mod. I didn't think it was that easy. And I didn't think you could really put anything you want in the, in the map. And when I found out you could, it, uh, it was... Pretty, pretty cool. A daring leap took a dangerous turn. A college student ended up wedged between two buildings for hours after trying to jump from roof to roof in an attempt to impress a girl. 22-year-old Grant Birdsong could not move. Wedged in a small space suspended about five feet above the ground. His girlfriend. She was with him at the time and alerted first responders to his plight. Hello? Is this Grant? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Hey, what's up, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, AJ, right? Yeah. I'm doing a documentary. I heard, like, from Cam about, like, this your situation. Because I didn't hear about anything about that on the news or anything. But when he told me that, like, you were close to him, I was like, hey, 
maybe I should do a documentary on him and stuff like that, like learn his story and situation like that. The documentary is about like how people get internet famous and how it can affect their lives in like a, a good or like a, a bad way. Okay. Yeah, and I, I, I want your story to be out there. I don't want it to be like trying to shame you or anything because that's not what I'm like out there to do. Okay. Yeah, honestly, I was thinking about making some sort of documentary or mockumentary about it too. Oh, but really? There's, uh, there's plenty of uh, stuff to talk about. So sure, yeah, man. I'd, uh, I'd love to. All right, cool. Uh, that sounds good. My understanding is he was jumping between two buildings and fell in between the basically a 16 to 18 inch crevice and fell three stories. Just got off the phone with Graham Birdsong, and we talked, and he can't do the interview. I wish we, he could have. Out of respect and his wishes, I'm not going to put the interview in there. Uh, so that's the end for this story on the Duck Eater. How do you feel your family and friends felt about it? Yeah, I show my parents. Uh... It was funny, um, they, they don't know what it means to be internet famous, like, they don't know. We're children of the internet, we grew up with this stuff. We know what it's like to be on the internet. But, you know, they're, they're not really too internet savvy, so it didn't really affect them like it would the average person, but um, it still spread, you know. My aunt was congratulating me, she was like, hey, congrats on your video, you know, that's awesome, and all that stuff. And I even went to a friend's house whose mom congratulated me as well and said, hey, great job on the video, that's awesome, you know. people. People were really, you know, enthusiastic about it. And people would tell their friends, like, hey, I know this guy. This guy made this. He's one of my friends. When I first met Doug, I always, I always thought he, I always would joke around with him and, you know, call him crazy and kind of make fun of him and, in a joking way, a friendly way. Like, last year he spent hours making a replica of the Shining Hotel on Minecraft. And I would always kind of joke with him and call him crazy. He was, he's always been, he's always been very uh, detail oriented and very obsessed with getting things perfect. And then when I saw his Doom mod, it and his name blowing up on on social media and all that, it it sort of blew my mind. I definitely tried to help by sharing it on Facebook and things like that. Um, I think it's cool that that he got so much attention from it. So when I saw that he was trending, I thought, man, like, good for him. Like, maybe it wasn't. Maybe the summer didn't go to waste. Like, I'm ha I was happy for him. It definitely caught me by surprise when I started seeing his name pop up in articles and stuff on Facebook and people asking me if I knew Doug Keener. One thing that I thought was interesting was when my brother, who doesn't know Doug, tried to show me the video and getting to point out to him that that he was my friend. You know, that was. You know, it was cool. I did not expect it to get the reception that it got. Uh, it wasn't until my friend uh, Fez, um, he posted my video that I uploaded to Reddit, and it just spread from there. Literally, it got on the front page of Reddit. People were sharing it like mad. I got probably 500,000 views in less than like a day. With it on TV was pretty cool, because I've never been on TV. And uh, hearing my name out of a celebrity's mouth, even if he is a, you know, low-level celebrity. Uh, still pretty cool. There's at least 10 articles, PC Gamer, GameSpot, jeez, uh, there's a ton. Even Smosh wrote an article, which was completely annoying Music because like bad publicity. It, it was basically saying that I hated Seinfeld and that he applauded me for allowing him to finally kill Jerry Seinfeld, which was not the whole, that was not the point of making the mod. It was not to, to make him Seinfeld murder simulation. I had to put a disclaimer on my video saying I'm a huge fan of Seinfeld. I had no intention of, of making it seem like I'm anti, like an anti-Semite. People were calling me anti, an anti-Semite just because, you know, main, the main cast of Seinfeld and the producers and stuff are Jewish and that I'm murdering them in the game so I must be a Nazi. Like, that's ridiculous. That's absolutely absurd to even assume that. Why would any person spend that long on something they hated, you know? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, that's just insane. But 
the the real reason I made it was not for the exposure. It was not for the the great reception. It was just because I was bored, you know. And I I wanted to put two things together that I loved. It it had nothing to do with with wanting to be famous for it or anything like that. However, I kind of knew going in that it could get that big. You know, I didn't expect it to, but I always had in the back of my mind that it could get that big. I honestly did not feel any different. I mean, I felt proud. I mean, I felt like, oh, you know, I, I, did, I did do a lot of hard work on this and I, I, you know, I spent a lot of time and it, I, I guess it was paying off, you know, and it kind of blew my mind that it got as big as it did. And it was just stupid, it's stupid. In, in theory and in reality, in every way of the word, it is stupid. It is completely stupid. But it, it's just, that's what makes it, that's what makes internet things famous. Look at fucking Pen Pineapple Apple Pen. That is fake, people know about that now. And it's just stupid. Damn Daniel went to Ellen and they got a fucking deal with Vans just because of some stupid thing on the internet. Now obviously it's short lived, 15 minutes and it's gone. 15 minutes of fame, man. And, uh, you know, I, I, people think, oh my God, well, I wonder what those guys are thinking up there, you know, on TV and stuff. Now, obviously, getting on TV is way different than, you know, being on Chris Hardwick's show. Like, who gives a shit about Chris Hardwick? But still, you think, oh, what are they doing? You know, like, oh, how do they feel about this? But, you know, I, I live that, and it's like, it, it's nothing. It's nothing. It feels no different. It really doesn't. fame we're all just memes everybody's a goddamn meme and we're famous for 10 minutes <laughs>